punch it. Yeah, that's 428 pound-feet of torque. That is why you buy a Mach-E. At least anyone who's coming from a Mustang, that's probably why you buy a Mach-E, is for the torque. It's got 346 horsepower, like I said, 428 pound-feet of torque. This, of course, comes from the dual motors. You can spec the Mach-E in rear-wheel drive, which I love, but up here in the Pacific Northwest, it is currently five degrees out. Pretty cold, not too cold. Actually, later this week, it's gonna get to about negative 17, which is like, <laughs> that's unheard of here uh, in Vancouver. So we would be prepared. This one I'm driving today is on snow tires. Like I said in the intro, it's specced in this new vapor blue metallic, which I love. It's still kind of flat for a metallic, but it's got a good gloss to it. And then this one has also been specced with the extended battery, extended range 91 kilowatt hour battery. We're going to get into some of the competition and how this compares now in 2023. Uh, base price here for the 23 model year, $67,000 Canadian. Uh, and this I'm talking for the premium, which is the mid-grade Mustang Mach-E. So base, premium, and then performance. Let's do a launch. Let me redo that. I mean, engage, which is of course the, the middle drive mode. We've got whisper, we've got engage, we've got unbridled, which I still think is hilarious, but I'm used to it. We'll put on propulsion sound just for you guys. Oh yeah. It accelerates quick, zero to 60 in 5.1 seconds. There's no uh, Genesis-esque engine, fake engine sounds coming through here. It's just one propulsion sound. I usually leave it off. You really notice the torque a lot more when you're already moving than you just punch it and you're like, wow, this is, uh, I will never go back to a gas powered car. That's that part of me says that, believe it or not, you guys, when I'm daily driving any EV, this is plenty of power. The premium has so much power. Yes, you can get an additional, it's around 100 horsepower with the with the GT, which is a lot. That will make a difference, but is it necessary? No, video never does these things justice, but is it necessary? No, absolutely not. One thing, and I don't remember this from the last time I drove this car, maybe it was the case, but when you are in different drive modes, the screen, the 10.2 inch screen, which is very small, minimalist, very wide screen, I kind of like it. It's not completely just not there like in a Tesla, but it's small. But when you're in whisper drive mode, the animations on the screen, it just keeps moving. And as far as I know, there's no option to turn it off. So it's kind of a little bit distracting. And then when we go into engage, it goes away. It's the only drive mode where those animations go away. Consequently, or incidentally, I guess, it's just the drive mode I enjoy the most as well. And then uh, if you go into unbridle, you do have a little bit less movement, but it's still moving. The designs are good. I just give me more customizable options. I do love the Maki, and I said this in my previous review, I'm not gonna rehash everything. But as far as an EV crossover is concerned, the driving dynamics here are my favorite out of any EV crossover, at least. So what does the premium pack get you, this mid model? It does get you a heated steering wheel, it gets you heated seats, it gets you uh, an electric or a power passenger seat. It does also get you this panoramic roof. You jump up wheel sizes from 18 inch to 19 inch. Uh, you do also get the Bang & Olufsen sound system. How could I forget? As well as uh, these perforated, not leather seats. There is no leather in the Mach-E. And then of course we get wireless charging as well. So there's a few things that you don't get with the base model that you do get here, but you are able to spec the extended range on the base model. Yeah. If you're not careful, uh, the Mach-E will get you into trouble. All the things I said about the 2022 model still hold true here. It's got great dynamics. Uh, the suspension, I did kind of harp on a little bit. Some people thought, you guys thought I kind of was a little bit harsh, maybe on the suspension in the Mach-E. 
it felt a little bit bouncy to me. I felt a little bit harsh. And it's still a stiff ride, especially when compared to some of the competition, but it's a heavy car. So to be able to try and keep these good driving dynamics, rear bias, all wheel drive in such a heavy vehicle while still retaining really good ride quality and road comfort is an uphill battle, I get that. We have 466 kilometers of range and that's actually gone up 20 since last year, I guess just due to some small tweaks in efficiency. So that puts it above the GV60 in range, but also the C40 recharge in top trim. So it does have the most range. It is the most utilitarian on paper. Now, out of those three, if I was going for more of an SUV feel, if I want ground clearance, I'm not gonna get the Mach-E. That's just, I mean, the GV60 is kind of included in that. These are very close to being like a lifted hatchback versus a crossover uh, or SUV. So the C40 has quite a bit more ground clearance. If you were doing any kind of off-roading, I would, I would go uh, in that direction. And what do you get in the GV60 that you do not get in the Mustang Mach-E? Well, you get a heads-up display. You get a, a bunch of leather. You get a whole ton of leather. You get four-way adjustable lumbar versus two here and a few other tweaks. And even with the base model GV60, which is even less, you still get all that leather. So it really depends if you do want the extra range here, which you, you know, I do have to give credit to the Mach-E. It has exceptional range when compared to these two other competitors. So for those of you who are curious about range, because we do have apparently an additional 20 kilometers, I did calculate just our drive today. Uh, so we began at 86%. Now it says 84 in this little clip, but as soon as I started driving, and I guess I kind of calculated based off a little bit of my driving habits, uh, it went up to 86% almost immediately, 310 kilometers of range stated. Uh, and after this drive, as you guys can see, I've driven 70 kilometers, but the range is down 99 kilometers. So of course, uh, we were not driving economically. I was on and off the gas a lot. Uh, EVs get better fuel, not fuel economy, Marcus, uh, get better. They're more efficient in the city than they are on the highway. Of course, this is opposite to a traditional gasoline powered car. Uh, so I'd imagine if I was just in the city, I'd probably, I probably would have got a lot closer uh, to the 99 kilometers that it stated from the range that uh, I have driven, but I'd only actually driven 70 kilometers in reality. So just figured you guys might wanna know uh, the range when you're driving Spirited. It's it's close. So I'd imagine 466 from the get-go, if I was driving like a lunatic the whole time, I'm gonna guess I probably would get somewhere around 400 kilometers of range. And it's a cold day, it's gone down two degrees, it's now three degrees Celsius. Uh, so I think that's worthy to know. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy the rest of the video. So the question really is, who is going to be buying or looking at the Mach-E? What do you guys, what do you guys like or enjoy about the Mach-E over the GV60? Now, personally, I love the way the Mach-E looks. I think that it still has going for it. Uh, now the back end, I still haven't really come fully around on. <laughs> it's so much fun, even with a little bit of slip, the rear end just plays with you. It's great, it's great. Um, I still think the Mach-E looks great. The rear end, I have yet to come around on. The GV60, those wheels are insane. I would never want to look at them or own a vehicle with those wheels. The other design elements, I still haven't fully come around on. The C40, on the other hand, looks amazing. I love the way that thing looks. But again, on the interior, you get a bit of more of that minimalism. The infotainment, it's very simplistic. There's not a whole ton of options uh, as far as drive mode and everything where this is kind of the middle ground. It kind of splits the difference between the GV60 and the C40 in terms of features. Now the C40, you do get a few other things standard, just like the GV60 that you don't get here, such as the, the power passenger seat uh, and some other material choices. Please let me know what you guys think in the, in the comments below. I still love the Mach-E. I think it's a great vehicle. Before we go though, I do have to mention, uh, I mentioned the screen and the animations. One more thing I really don't like about the Mach-E is 
the infotainment has been inconsistent. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you would have seen a video I posted yesterday of the entire system just freezing up. And that, ha that wasn't the first time that happened. I just happened to have my phone, so I caught it on video that time. But uh, there has been another time where I got in the car. I was on the road for about two minutes before the screen even booted up at all. Not only that, uh, but during my drive today, it's been fine, but during other drives, my phone via Bluetooth uh, it's a Galaxy S10e, if you guys, if you guys care. <laughs> no, it is not an iPhone, uh, but that shouldn't matter. I had Android Auto going. It disconnected randomly just three times. So it's been inconsistent out of all the other models and competitors I've driven. This has been the worst for that. Uh, so I really hope Ford just kind of fixes those little uh, problems and makes a few tweaks here and there. Let me know what you guys think. You can follow me on Instagram at Roads Untraveled, driving a lot of fun stuff coming up. Uh, next week I'll be in the Lightning finally, that'll be fun, but we've got a few corners coming up. It's going to unbridle, hit these corners. We'll see you next time. Love that the rear end steps out first every single time. <laughs> it's heavy though. <laughs>